gravitational field. The field is a region or an area in which a force is concentrated or experienced. Examples of this include the gravitational field, the electrostatic field, and the magnetic field. A force field are forces whose sources do not require contact with the body that they affect. Their actions are felt over a distance from the source. Gravitation, also known as gravitational force, is the force of attraction exerted by a body on all other bodies in the universe. This force exists between a body and all other bodies around it. The region of space around a mass in which the gravitational force on the mass can be felt or is experienced is called the gravitational field. The weight is a gravitational force that the Earth or any other astronomical body exerts on an object. The weight of an object gives you an exact indication of how strongly the Earth or any other planet attracts that body towards its center. It is calculated as weight equals mass times gravity, where m is the mass and g is the acceleration due to gravity. So what is free fall? Free fall is a term used to describe a special kind of motion in the Earth's gravitational field. The free fall is the motion in the Earth or any other planet's gravitational field where no other force acts on the body. It is basically an ideal situation since in reality there is always some air resistance or air friction which slows down the motion. The law of universal gravitation. According to Isaac Newton, the universal law of gravitation states that every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force that is proportional to the product of their masses and if it's proportional to the square of the distance between them. Mathematically, it can be expressed as F equals G times M1 times M2 divided by R squared, where G is 6.67 to the power of negative 11 newton meter square per square kilogram. Let's solve a problem as regards this. Question 1. Assuming there exist two planets of masses 10 to the power of 27 and 10 to the power of 21 in this given solar system, determine the gravitational force of attraction if they are 10 to the power of 20 meter apart. Solution. Where m1 is 10 to the power of 27 and m2 is 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. R is the distance apart, which is 10 to the power of 20, and G, which is a constant 6.67 times 10 to the power of 11 newton meter square per square kilogram. Initiating the formula and substituting the values in, we're having F to be 6.67 newton. Let's try another one. Question 2. Determine the force of attraction between a body of mass 5 kg and another mass of 10 kg placed 10 cm away from each other. Solution Where well, M1 is 5 kg and M2 10 kg, the distance apart is 0.1 meters, just converting it to meters. Now we have a constant. We initiate our formula. Substituting a value into our formula f equals 3.3 .3 to the power of negative 7 newton. Gravitational field intensity. The gravitational field intensity at a point is a force per unit mass of an object placed at that point. Small g equals f divided by m. Its s high unit is newton per kilogram. It's a vector quantity and it's regarded as a solution due to gravity. The relationship between small g and big g. If the force of attraction f between two particles of matter separated by distance r is given by f equals g m1 times m2 divided by r squared. And we substitute the value of f for mg. But G equals F divided by M. So, on striking out the M, so we're having G equals big G times M1 divided by R squared, where the M1 is a bigger mass, 
this is the graph to show intensity. Comparison between small g and big G. Big G is an universal gravitational constant, while small g is a solution due to gravity. Big G is always constant, and small g varies from place to place. Big G is a scalar quantity, while small g is a vector quantity. The big G is measured in Newton meter square per square kilogram, while the small g is measured in meter per square second. The big G has a small value of 6.67 to the power of negative 11 Newton meter square per square kilogram, while the small g has a larger value of 9.8 meter per square second. Gravitational potential. The gravitational potential V at a point is the work done in taking a unit mass from infinity to that point. Mathematically, it is given as V equals to minus G times M divided by R. Its unit is joules per kilogram. Note, the negative sign in the equation means that the potential at infinity, which is zero, is higher than the potential closest to the mass. In other words, the gravitational potential V decreases as R increases and becomes zero when R is infinitely large. Escape velocity. This is the minimum velocity required for an object, say a satellite, to just escape or leave the gravitational field of an astronomical body, say the Earth. We can prove this using our formula F equals big G times M1 times M2 divided by R squared. We can say that the work done in carrying a mass m from a point at the distance r from the center of the earth or any astronomical body to a distance so great is w equals to g times m1 times m2 times r divided by r squared. Since work equals force times distance, we simply substitute the f into the equation and thus we'll give back to this equation. This work must equal the kinetic energy of the body of mass m at this point, having a velocity v. Since you know kinetic energy is half mv squared, and also work equals energy. Since the are SI units are both in Jones, so we substitute the kinetic energy formula into this our equation, then we will be having half mv square equals g times m1 times m2 times r divided by r square. So I'm cancelling out the m, that is the smaller m or the smaller mass, we're having half v square equals g times m1 times r divided by r2. But g equals g times m1 divided by r square. So initiating that into an equation, we will be having half v squared equals small g times r. So if this mass was launched from the Earth's surface, then we'll be having v equals the square root of 2g r. A rocket of mass 3000 kg was launched into space from the Earth's surface, so that you just escaped from the gravitational field. Calculate the velocity with which it escapes the Earth's gravitational influence. Solution Where the mass of the Earth, which is M1, is 6 to the power 24 kg, and the mass of the rocket is 3000 kg, the radius of the Earth is 6.3 to the power of 6, then we have a solution due to gravity B to be 9.8. We have our constant is 6.67 to the power of negative 11. So from V equals to the square root of 2GR, but we have our G, small g, to be big G times M1 divided by R square. But v equals to the square root of 2 times big G times M1 divided by R. If we substitute those values into our equation, then we will be having v equals to the square root of 1.25 to the power of 9, which gives us 1.12 to the power of 3. Packing orbit. Packing orbit is the orbit 
that which the period of a satellite in orbit is exactly equal to the period of that astronomical body or maybe Earth as it rotates about its axis. Thus, it is the orbit a satellite position is seen to stay over a particular place on the Earth as it rotates. So from my equation f equals g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared, I will pick the m1 to be the larger mass which is the mass of the earth and m2 which is just the m in this case to be the mass of the satellite. So recall that f equals m times v squared divided by r and big g times m1 equals small g times r squared. We get that from g equals big G times m1 divided by r squared. So we substitute that value of f here into our general equation, which is m times v squared divided by r equals g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared. So cancelling out the smaller mass, which is m in this case, we have v squared divided by r equals big G times m1 divided by r squared. So we have v squared, which is the velocity of the satellite, equals small g times r squared divided by r. So on squaring both sides of the equation, we're having v equals the square root of small g times r squared divided by r. If the period of the satellite in packing of it is t, then we have the velocity equals distance of the satellite around the orbit divided by the time taken. We have v equals to 2 pi r divided by t, where v squared equals to small g times r squared divided by r equals 2 pi squared times r squared divided by t squared. So we could have t squared to be 4 pi squared times r cubed divided by small g times r squared. Or you simply say t squared equals 4 pi squared times r squared divided by v squared. We could also take the square root of both of either things and this is what we have. With the period of this satellite in its orbit being equal to the period of Earth, for instance, which is 24 hours, the satellite will appear stationary. This is how TV stations broadcast programs. So when a satellite moves in circle close to the Earth's surface, then we have mv squared divided by r equals mg, which is the centripetal force. On making v the separator formula, we have v equals to square root g times r. Since the period t is the orbit, then we have the period to be distance of the satellite divided by the velocity. Therefore, t squared equals to 4 pi squared times r squared divided by v squared. On making t the separator formula, we have 2 pi the square root of r divided by g which is approximately where r is the radius of the earth and g is a solution due to gravity let's solve a problem let's regard this determine the acceleration of a satellite whose orbit about the earth is 2r solution since the distance between the planet and the satellite is 2r then the equation becomes f equals g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared, where the m1 is the mass of the Earth and the m2 is the mass of the satellite, which is m sub s. The radius of the Earth, which is big R, and we have the orbit of the satellite to be 2r. So substituting that into an equation, we're having f equals g times m1 times m2 divided by 2r squared equals m times a. Since we're interested in the acceleration of this satellite, we make a the subject of the formula and then we have big g times m1 divided by 4 r square but g equals big g times m1 divided by r square so substituting that in the equation we have acceleration equals small g 
divided by 4 and the answer of course is going to be meter per square second Kepler's law Kepler was one of those who challenged the world's prevailing view of the universe we see the sun and all planets orbiting around the earth just as the moon this is called the geocentric view Kepler and others especially Nikolai and Galileo changed this geocentric view into a heliocentric cosmology and was proven correct the first law the law of orbits according to Kepler all planets move around the sun in an elliptical orbit with the sun as one focal of the ellipse second law the law of error in an elliptical orbit a planet moves faster near the sun to sweep out equal area in equal time and this is the a the t is always constant the center of any planet sweeps out equal area in a straight line connecting the center of the sun and at any given time interval the third law is the law of period the square of the period of a planet's orbit is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of the orbit mathematically it is written as t squared divided by r cube in other words t squared divided by r cube is a constant for each planet where r is the average radius of the orbit and t is the period or the time of one revolution the proof since a planet is kept in a circular orbit by a centripetal force which is f equals to mv squared divided by r we have that mv squared divided by r equals to g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared where m1 is the mass of the sun and m2 is the mass of the planet so we have v squared equals to big g times m1 divided by r so for the period which is t equals to 2 pi r divided by v squared we have a substitution that the equation becomes t squared equals 4 pi squared times r cubed divided by big g times m1 so the proportionality constant can be expressed in terms of the mass of the sun which is the m1 or m sub degree s and the universal gravitational constant g however since g which is gravitational constant and m which is the mass of the sun are constant then we have the equation to become t squared divided by r cubed, which we know is always a constant. Point to note each planet revolves around the sun in its own orbit. The nearer a planet is to the sun, the faster its speed of revolution. In an elliptical orbit, a planet moves faster near the sun to sweep out equal area in equal time. All the planets revolve in one direction. The orbit of the planet, except that of Pluto, all lie. In the same plane. The speed of a body in circular path is constant but its velocity is changing continuously because its direction is changing. A solution due to gravity on the moon is about one sixth that of earth which is g on earth divided by six. Question time. The acceleration due to gravity on a mass on the earth's surface is 10 meter per square second. A. Calculate the acceleration due to gravity on the object when it is at a point four times the radius of the earth b determine the gravitational force that acts on this body question two given that the radius of the earth is 6.38 to the power of six kilometer and it's a solution due to gravity is 9.8 meter per square second determine the mass of the earth 